Do you have a practice lab? If you don't, and you're serious about your tech career, you should probably start thinking about setting one up ASAP. I'm gonna tell you why having a home lab is essential for IT career success. What's going on tech fam? Welcome back to the channel where we engage in IT career talk, tutorials, reviews, and news. And today we're gonna do a little IT career talk and we're gonna discuss why having a home lab is essential for IT career success. I'm gonna go through a few points of view, talk about a few of the reasons why I think that uh, home labs are essential. And then I'm gonna give you a little tour of my own little home lab setup. I don't think I've actually done that. I'm gonna do a brief run through of my whole little environment here to give you an idea of what you might, you know, help you with some ideas of what you might wanna put in yours. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Somebody out there might be like, Warner, why do I need a home lab? I think I can, you know what I'm saying? I think I can get by with just reading the material. Uh, why, what's the big deal? And I would just, you know, say this. In my opinion, having a home lab shows you the contrast between the theory that you're learning and the practical application of the skills that come along with what you learn, right? So, and this, here's a perfect example, right? Now, you might read in your book that you would install this particular application or this particular driver on the PC to do a particular thing. And it might walk you through the steps of installing the application or the driver and the whole nine of setting it up on the computer. But what that theory can't tell you is how that application or that driver is going to behave with the other applications and drivers on the system that you're trying to install it on. And what about the installation process is going to change because of the other applications or drivers that are on the system that may or may not conflict with this new application you're trying to install. That ain't going to come in the theory. That comes from doing, right? So when you get your little brand new application you wanna install it, you ever installed the application on a computer or went to install one and followed all the instructions and for some reason, the thing just wouldn't work. The installation kept failing, kept stopping halfway through. And you're like, what is going on? I'm following all the steps. I don't know what the problem is. Spend hours banging your head against the table trying to figure out what it is. Finally, you find in some read somewhere that that installation requires this certain level of Java and the developers neglected to put that information in the installation process. So how would you know, right? So the, the application won't install because you don't have the latest version of Java installed on your machine. And there ain't no way to know that until somebody has run into this problem and it becomes well documented and someone thinks to put the information out to be gathered. So, I mean, that's kind of a perfect example. And you're gonna have that in every aspect of what you're doing. The theory is gonna tell you, theoretically, you can put this processor on this motherboard and everything should work fine. But what they don't tell or what they can't possibly know is that during the manufacturing process of this processor, um, they used an outdated chipset so that it's not now not compatible with the motherboard that it should be compatible with and so on and so forth. Things like this happen. And you wouldn't know that unless, right, you, you've gone through it or someone else went through it and you learned it. And like I said, this happens in all aspects of work that you're doing. So when you can install Active Directory on a virtual machine and go through the process of creating, deleting, and moving users, you get to learn the behavior of the applications 
what happens when I try to move this user to this folder or this, you know, well, the, the application doesn't like it when you move it like this, but you can move it like this. These are the type of things I'm talking about. Hands on gives you time to practice this and figure out new ways of doing things and learn new ways of doing things that maybe the people who trained you don't even know. And so in the interest of keeping this short and sweet, I'm gonna stop there, but there's plenty more explanation to be had on this subject. So moving on to another reason I think home labs are important. The home lab provides applicable hands-on experience that in areas that you may not get working as a part of your role in a production environment. And here's what I mean by that. Oftentimes when you are working for a company and you're working in an environment, everything is segmented. You've got people who all they do is update servers. This is all they do, they update servers. You've got people all they do is create new users. This is all they do. You've got people who all they do is active directory management. This is all they do. So it can become very compartmentalized to the point to where you're doing the exact same action all day long and this is your job. And you may have a title of system administrator, but all you do all day long is clean up OUs, move user accounts, um, from different folders and different places, create folders and delete folders. That's all you do and you're a system administrator. It can get that segmented. So there's gonna be times to where you want to experiment with technology and processes, but you can't as a part of your regular role because you don't have access to those systems. Um, the company doesn't trust you or trust your job title to be able to do this. It's it has a specialized job title to do that and no one else can touch it. And, and this happens very a lot in networking, you know, in the networks. You ain't the senior architect or something. You ain't touching the inside of no router. You know what I'm saying? They don't trust you enough. You know what I'm saying? And you ain't, you is definitely not finna, you know, crash this system or crash this network. So sometimes you end up in places to where you're just, on an assembly line and all you do is the same thing over and over again. So if how do you grow in an environment like that? How do you learn new things in an environment like that? Well, you're very limited in that environment, but if after work you can go home and jump in your own Windows Server Lab, you can go through the entire process from installation of Windows Server to user account creation, v, uh, VM creation, um, all of it, uh, IP addressing, management, the whole nine, because you have to do all of that to set up an environment on your own. So you get to learn processes for every different segment of IT departments that would make up a whole organization. And that is invaluable. So um, that's another big reason um, because it gives you this ex hands-on experience quicker than you might get it going from role to role or progressing in your role at your current employer. All right, so uh, what's another reason why I think at-home practice labs are essential to your IT career? It gives you a safe environment for testing new configs, testing new ideas with configs, um, witnessing application behavior as it interacts with other applications and drivers. It takes you through all the processes of system updates, you know, system requirements and behaviors. Um, like I said, a lot of times you may not uh, be privy to a lot of this information in a production environment because it's, it can be very segmented. But um, when you have your home lab, you get to see all how all of this stuff works from a grassroots level, like from scratch with one person at the beginning of a mini environment, and you can progressively add on to that environment, grow it bigger and bigger until it mirrors an enterprise environment, but it's all in your virtual lab that you created. Now, granted, that's gonna be a lot of work and it's gonna be a progression over a long time, but if you can do that, the skills you develop and the knowledge you develop 
at, while doing this stuff will make you a, a, a all star at work. Cause you can come in here and speak to everybody's job, the intricacies of everybody's job, not just an overview of what you do and what you do. You can speak to the intricacies of the processes that are involved in every department's job. And when you start showing that ability, people start noticing things and you start moving places. And that's what you want in an IT career. This is of great benefit to you. And I tell you what, You'll run into situations where you, you'll save people's behinds with your knowledge that if you had not stepped in and been like, hey, let me tell you something, you know, you, you do know this and that and the other, if you do this, that and the other. And maybe they didn't know it and went and broke something. They, they remember and appreciate that, trust me. You save somebody behind, um, it's like the mob, you know what I'm saying? They owe you a favor. <laughs> But nah, I mean, I'm just, you know, seriously, that can be beneficial. When you come in and start flexing knowledge like that uh, and you start helping people with that knowledge, um, people take notice. So keep that in mind. All right. And, and so any more, what else? What else is, in my opinion, a good reason to have an at-home practice lab? All right. So... The next thing, and this is probably going to be the last one. An at-home practice lab, it acts as a tool, an engine almost, because if it's there, you're going to use it, of continuous skill development and experimentation. Um, it's nothing like being able to walk into your space, walk into your lab, or log on to your lab if you if you you know doing it online you got all your stuff online and by the way you don't have to buy any hardware equipment to do a lab in in many cases some cases it's gonna just be better to go ahead and buy the equipment but nowadays they got virtual simulators for just about everything you can do and, and a lot of them offer free um, sandbox environment so I mean all you have to do is go look for it and you can have multiple labs all virtual online and all you need is a computer to work in. with that said you know um it's nothing like coming into your space being able to switch flip a button or log in and practice the skills that you've read about the skills that you've thought about oftentimes you'll have ideas like when you especially when you learn something new you're like okay that's cool but i wonder if i can do this with that and you need a place to go see if you can make that happen. This is how you be innovative. You've already come up with a new idea for something that you was just taught, but you need to experiment with it to see if it's even feasible. So that lab environment is gonna be your most valuable tool for creating new innovation and sparking new ideas, as well as building on your skill. And I, I'll tell you right now, if you, in your career capacity, you're always coming up with new ideas to enhance your work environment for you and your coworkers in your department. Um, that is the key to success in an IT career. It will take you far. If you can make processes better, look, rewrite processes, um, update how things are done, show people new ways of doing things, introduce new technologies to people and you start becoming understood as an authority in you know, uh, the realm of technology, um, that's a very valuable situation to be in. And uh, you'll start to see things moving a lot faster than if you just went to work, sat there in your queue, typed out your eight hours or seven hours and went home and never thought about it again. Um, your, your movement and progression and ability to command um, salaries and positions uh, is greatly enhanced when you operate in a manner such as this. So, you know, I'm, I'm not going to keep this going on any further. These are just some ideas to think about. This is some information that I thought would be valuable. And right now, I'm going to give you a tour of my 
home lab slash office slash command center just like i promised so without further ado here that is right now all right so now let's take a look at my office slash home lab i call it the command center all right and i'm gonna give you a tour and talk about what we're looking at as we go along all right so we're just gonna start right here on the corner and we'll just work our way around the space as we go right so right here what you see is a little workspace for repairs that I might have to do to laptops or desktops um, I've got another space for this but I needed a, a space that was close to me that I could quickly change out hard drives or RAM or so on and so forth so that's what this is right Immediately to the left, this is my Linux machine. Uh, and as you can see, I've been on it playing around. Now, this is the screen, obviously. This is this is the tower. This is an HP Intel i7 uh, computer that I had custom built in 2013 I think so so it's been through the years and it's been faithful to me obviously I've upgraded it several times power supplies video cards so on and I always I, I never put that side cover back on there all right so this is my Linux machine it is very important to have equipment that you can use to lab if in the technologies that you're working on. And so I could have gone with a VM for this, but I like Linux. So, I, and I had this extra box sitting around. I was gonna make an open air case or something. And I was like, no, nah, I'm gonna turn this into my Linux machine. And so that's what that is. I do have the LPI Linux essential certification. What I'm doing here is just kind of uh, uh, updating my skills. It's been a little while since I touched it and I gotta freshen up my skills and and add to my skills uh, as I continue to go on to the, you know, on my cloud journey. This right here is my workhorse desktop. This is a custom build. I built this myself. Please excuse the dust. And dander, I haven't cleaned it yet, right? It's just been sitting here collecting dust. But it is the workhorse because that's exactly what it, it, it is to me, a workhorse. And it's, this is a Lee and Lee case. It's got the uh, Ryzen 7 chip. Uh, it's got the Red Dragon video card, AMD build right here. Um, everything that went into it, I got it posted somewhere, right? Moving on around, I've got an external hard drive carriage. So I can plug those big 3.5s in and it takes the small ones as well. Uh, these are always handy. I always keep one. Then I, if I step back here, you can see my screens. I got uh, two screens here, the big screen there. This also, this space also doubles as my YouTube channel recording space. So you can see I got the ring lights. I got my webcam, uh, got my microphone, Rode microphone. That's all set up so I can, uh, you know what I'm saying? Handle my business. And it, it, the functionality is amazing. Uh, it really works out for me. Moving on around, this is a two channel amplifier. And I have the, the, that connected to two of the Serwin Vega 10 inches. And that is connected to a Avid Mbox Pro 2 or 3 and a preamp this is a cisco webex desk pro i use this for work 
that is a Samsung tablet Galaxy work. So this whole section here is my work section. I work from home, so I needed a space to do my day job work. And this is where I do it. This is all my equipment. And so I just turn this way when, I, when I'm doing my day job work, turn this way when I'm doing my at home and every other kind of work and turn this way when I'm working in my lab here. Now I also have a virtual lab. So I've gone away from uh, hardware labs. All of my labs are virtual now, except for this Linux box here. Um, I've got the free tier AWS accounts. I've got the code cloud. I got all that stuff where I can online do labs and work on stuff. And that's been really beneficial. And moving on around is my, well, I got some, It's I think that it's really important in whatever space you use to work and so on and so forth, that you have something that, uh, you know, speaks to your inner likings, I guess, for lack of a better word. And, uh, you know, something that accents your space with a touch of you. And I don't know if uh, everyone who knows me knows I am a big Star Trek fan. So as you can see, I got a little bit of stuff here and I got the vintage Beast by Dre headphones. Nice. And these are little guys that, you know, come in those McDonald's Happy Meals. My daughter uh, loves McDonald's Happy Meals, uh, of course, right? And so whenever she gets the boys ones, she would give them to me because she said, these are for boys, these are you. And she would keep the girl ones, but then she just started giving me all of them. As you can see, I got a couple of the girl ones on here. And so, you know, that's been real cool. This is, uh, you know, a 3D printed version of the USS Enterprise. And if I'm not mistaken, that is B, Enterprise B. I got that 3D printed a while ago. This is an actual model of the Enterprise E. And I just took it right out the box, slapped it together, start putting some, the stickers on it. And you know, this is where I stopped. There's a thousand more stickers that go on it, but this was kind of really my first one out the box and I really didn't know what I was doing. And so I, I just said, Let, let's go through the process. And that's what I did. But this one, if you know anything about Star Trek, you can recognize this is the USS Voyager. It came like that. And I'm not done with it, but this is what it looked like now. I've done a lot of work. I wanted to go in and really just, you know, you know, do the whole model experience with this thing. Plus, I wanted it to look nice because I do like um, the ship. So I even went as far as to uh, put LED lights in this thing. I mean, I really spent some time on it. It's really nice. Uh, yeah sweet huh yes I did all of this myself and like I said it ain't done but uh, you know I got a little battery operated switch thing on there real nice you feel me okay so I got some of the books for some of the certification and some of the stuff that I've been interested in overall in my tech career back here and uh, you know obviously routing and switching Got some security, got some more networking, really network heavy because I like network stuff. Some act active directory certifications that I've, um, you know, taken in, in, in past over the years. Another 3D print. This is Enterprise D. Uh, obviously got the picture, Kirk Picard. Cisco and uh, Janeway. It's kind of shiny. Bright. It's got like this faint bright, so it's reflecting. You can hardly see it, but that's that. There's the box to model. And down here, I got some more little, you know, infinity guys and some more books and so on. And so this is my office slash lab 
I call it the command center. Um, this is a really comfortable space to work and learn in. And, you know, I purposely set it up this way best I could because I spend a lot of time in this space because when I ain't working, I'm learning or also working on personal projects. I run a business, I have other things going on. So essentially I'm always working, but you know, this is the space I do it in. And so just to keep reiterating, it is important to have a lab a, a uh, practice lab, a, a virtual space, an office that you can go in and definitely get away from distractions because it, it, it is certainly hard to study and learn new things when things are distracting. You need a door. You need to be able to close the door. You need to have whatever you need in front of you um, technology wise so that you can make the most of your time when you're trying to learn all of this new stuff that is going to ultimately enhance your career, make you more valuable, and pay you lots and lots of moolah, money, dollars, ducats, paper, cheese, scratch, loot, chips, flow stacks, loot, green, whatever you want to call it. All right, there you go. That was the lab. And a little bit of, you know, a little bit of my personality mingled in there. So what y'all think about that? Did it give you any ideas about your lab? Hopefully so. Now you might have some people out there that might be like, well, well, Warner, how often should I, you know, should I practice in my lab? How often should I do work in the lab? And shout out to the wine Lightfoot because he has a mantra that says lab every day and I could not agree more now obviously I understand that labbing every single day might become you know a bit of a challenge for some people what with having all you know life and children and jobs and so on and so forth so you know instead of saying every day or every other day as much as you can but I'm gonna tell you right now if you can lab every day it's only gonna help you it can only be beneficial because you once you start to become recognized as a subject matter expert in any particular area you are the authority in that area in that environment they come to you about it people want to know your opinion about it and when you want to move around and make moves you are the one in control of the decisions and you are the one who are doing the choosing instead of it being the other way around. So you definitely want to position yourself in a position like that. Now, um, someone might be like, well, how should I set my lab up? Should it be, should I go buy a bunch of equipment? What if I ain't got the money or so on and so forth? And I think I mentioned this earlier. You can do the hardware lab if you've got stuff around that you can set your lab up with. If not, you can do a virtual lab just about every um, aspect of entry level IT in particular that you can do. They have an online sandbox that you can do that in. And if, especially if you're in cloud, which I am, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, they give you a free sandbox. So you can go to town. There's a place, there's a packet tracer. If you like networking and you want to play with routers and switches, I would definitely recommend packet tracer. And there's a GS3. Um, there's all kind of platforms out there like code cloud or um, cloud academy where you can where they have practice labs and things so there's plenty of stuff out there you just got to go look for it but having the practice lab that's what you want to be looking into that's what you want to be doing so i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up tech fam do me a favor if, if this content was valuable 
hit the like button for me so we can get this video in front of others who might feel like it is valuable to them and if you're not already subscribed to the channel right now is as good a time as any and you can stay aware of new videos when they drop by clicking the bell icon and until the next video tech fam peace